So we're going to talk about tunnels. It's one of my favorite things. But uh, what a better place to start talking about tunnels than at Canada's oldest railway tunnel. We're here in Brockville, which is just uh, about 45 minutes east of Kingston. And I'm standing at the opening at the south end of the Brockville Tunnel. It was uh, Canada's first tunnel in about 1857 to about 1860 it was being constructed. They used three different tunneling methods, as I'll show you when we get inside. As we enter the tunnel from the south end, this brickwork is just meters below the street, half a meter actually, the, the street sits just on top of this brick. Of course, the cover gets deeper as we head down the tunnel. So inside the Brockville Tunnel, you can see here, this is uh, limestone masonry bricks that have been utilized to uh, tunnel through soil in front of the courthouse. This is the southern third of the tunnel. This is about five meters wide by five meters tall. Would have been dug by hand and then filled in with these bricks. And you can see the wooden holes or the holes here where they would have used wooden scaffolding to build the tunnel. If you're wondering what the bright lights are, this has now been turned into a pedestrian walkway in the city of Brockville. And as you can see way down there is the light at the end of the tunnel. And uh, let's go for a walk. Up here you can see some chimneys in the tunnel. These are where the smoke from the old trains used to go up through the buildings that are on top of us here and be vented outside. So I'm just going to continue to walk a little bit down here. I'm just going to turn around here. Here you can see where the brickwork, which was used underneath the soil, has given way to exposed rock. This is where the miners mining the tunnel would have had to change tunneling methods from soil tunneling and backfilling with bricks to blasting through the rock. And you can see the exposed rock in the roof. Let's go for a little farther walk down here. We've talked about joints when uh, tectonics acts on rock. Joints create natural breaks. You can see behind me some beautiful examples of that kind of structure. Those planes in the rock, even the roof of the tunnel is absolutely flat. That's, that's not a that's not a constructed break, that's a natural break to a joint horizontally. And then you can see these vertical joints that the tunnelers have had to go through. One of the coolest things about the Brockville Tunnel, however, are these cave formations. Above us, above this pre-Cambrian quartzite, are the Ordovician limestones and sandstones, which are very calcite rich. And over, since this tunnel's been open for 150 years or so, the groundwater has seeped through the roof and created these beautiful stalactites, stalagmites, and cave formations. Again, there behind me, you can see the fantastic structure, the jointing in the rock. The, these walls are, are vertical. They weren't blasted that way. The, the tunnel has just broken to form this shape. This tunnel is effectively unsupported. We put a few bolts in just to uh, protect the public against a few pieces that might fall off in, in, during the tourist times here, but it's been unsupported for 160 years. As they were constructing it, they realized that they couldn't really excavate fast enough. So they had to build this shaft over my head. This comes down from the street above, and this would have en enabled them to tunnel in both directions at the same time. Just over my head, you can see one of the rock bolts that was put in when the tunnel reopened just a few years ago for the public to try to keep them safe. It's just there as a precaution, but this rock is such that it will stay pretty much stable for another hundred years easily. You can probably read that sign behind me. When this uh, tunnel was being constructed, dynamite was not yet invented and being used, so they would fill holes with black powder light it with an old-fashioned fuse like you see in the movies and run like hell. And so just behind me here is where the tunnel transitions now back out of the rock to the north and into glacial till, so hard soil that was put down during the last glaciation on the back side of this rock as the glacier moves south. You can see that clay brickwork up to the rock. This is where the, there would have been a cliff here, which would then have been uh, filled in with glacial clay glacial soil, glacial till, uh, 16 to 11,000 years ago. And then the tunnelers would have mined through this material and assembled all of this brick lining by hand. 
You can see the wetness from the groundwater seeping through the tunnel, through the brickwork. So let's, uh, let's just go and walk to the end. And here you can see the effects of groundwater with these sort of cave formations in the moss forming on water that's percolated down through the soil, down through the uh, limestones and the sandstones, and uh, come out in the tunnel. So the tunnel is quite wet on the, on the walls, and that's the nature of being underground. There's always water in the rocks and soil underground. We're just slowly walking down to the north end of the tunnel. This is where the trains would have come from the main line and uh, then come through this tunnel bringing goods to the shores of Brockville to be traded with the United States just across the river. So here we are at the exit. This is the north portal of the tunnel. I'll take my mask off now while we're outside and uh, just appreciate this little bit of Can Canadian heritage and tunneling heritage. It's a very significant uh, landmark if you're when you're back on campus and we're out of this COVID situation this is a great place to come and uh, learn about Canadian history but also learn about tunnels and what's not fun about that, right? <laughs> Another look at this vertical joint fit forming the wall of the tunnel, another one forming the roof coming together in an intersection. This tunnel would have been attempted as an arch-shaped tunnel and without support the rock had just broken back. Here the tunnelers encountered a, a larger fault through the rock. They couldn't keep the tunnel open with just drill and blast and so they had to go back to using this brick liner to hold back the sheared and weakened faulting material. This fault would have happened any time in the last billion years or so. Who doesn't like trains, right? Especially when they're in a tunnel. And now we're coming back to the south end in downtown Brockville. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed your visit to the Brockville Tunnel. And I hope you'll be able to visit the Brockville Tunnel someday when this COVID thing is all done. <laughs>